the role of savings in an economy, investment into capital goods. So it, it comes from saving, invested in capital goods, which are tools that help you uh, become more productive and efficient if they work. And then that allows you to save more time um, and save more money, energy, and resources to continue to, to reinvest. Um, but what we're also going to look at is the role of what's called an international division of labor and international trade. Um, an international division of labor is the fact that all over the world, people can be contributing one little piece of the overall uh, com combined product of something. So for example, if you're using a product that has rubber in it, that rubber could have come from a place that's not even in our country that was, was farmed and then, and then mass produced and synthesized and then put into a factory into some sort of product that is used as a rubber in, you know, maybe like the sole of a shoe or something like that. And we're going to illustrate this by a fairly common item that we're all familiar with, uh, a sandwich. And there's this video that it, it took me a while to actually find it because I knew it was out there, but I couldn't get the right Google search on it for some reason over the years. But we're going to look at, think through the, the complexity of interactions that had to go into making a sandwich. There's this video um, on YouTube of this guy who decided to make a sandwich absolutely from scratch, okay? This means that he, every ingredient, uh, I think he kind of cheated in some ways and I'll explain that in a second, but every ingredient that went into this, this chicken sandwich that he was going to make, he had to himself acquire and then produce to make the ingredients. So in other words, he had to get wheat for the bread. He had to grow the vegetables. He had to get milk from a cow to make butter, to make the, to, to be an ingredient in baking the bread. Um, or if it includes any type of cheese or something like that, I'd do that. He has to go to a farm and slaughter a chicken. He has to he has to boil the chicken. He has to cook the chicken. He has to get the, the meat that way. He has to get different ingredients like salt. At one point, he goes out to the ocean and gets ocean water for salt and distills it down until he has salt, which requires basically for him an airplane that a friend had, a boat that he's allowed to go out into the ocean and do this. And all the ingredients of the sandwich, his challenge to himself was to make this out of scratch, okay? Meaning he starts with all the products and makes them or acquires them beginning to end in order to make this sandwich. And it gives an appreciation of all the difficulty and the, the challenge of getting all those resources for one person, having the knowledge of how to do that, having to figure out where certain items are located, having to wait the time to, to grow um, the vegetables, to, to get the milk from the cow, all these things that go into something that's, that's fairly simple. Nobody... I don't think anybody would be amazed if I was holding a sandwich. Oh my gosh, what is that? How did you how did you do that? Because a sandwich is fairly normal, commonplace. But a sandwich, if you think about its economic history and all the interactions, millions of interactions that we can't know or control that took place 
to produce that sandwich, we should be amazed at this. This should be impossible. Now, this guy, uh, I, I say that I think he kind of cheated, although I, my hat's off to him for figuring all this stuff out. He kind of cheated because he's still using his home oven, his, his kitchen supplies, his stove, the, the gas and power that, that go to all those things, the, the items to do that. Right. So he's and all of those have an economic history behind them as well that you couldn't do unless someone else until unless millions of people interacted to produce ovens and stoves and gas power and electricity and light bulbs and, you know, all these different items. So I say just to be fair, OK, well, he has the. Uh, the ingredients in the sandwich are, are the things that he tries to produce. How much money, money and time, do you think the sandwich cost of him doing it that way? Take some, some guesses. How much do you think the sandwich cost? of him going through all this process in order to do that. Any guesses? Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of variables to add up, but here's here's the answer. It cost him $1,500 to build a sandwich out of the ingredients from the ground up and six months of time. $1,500 and six months of time. If that's true, and we already admitted that there are other things that he didn't necessarily most likely include in the price. He had to use gas and electricity to use the oven. He had to turn on the lights in the kitchen. He has to be in a kitchen that has a stove and all these things Okay, let's say all that's out there. It's just the, just the ingredients of the sandwich itself. $1,500 and six months. Now, there was someone in an earlier class who told me, but I just ate a sandwich right now. And that's the point. If sandwiches and all these interactions to make sandwiches for one individual, the knowledge, the skills, the proximity to resources cost just for the materials about $1,500 in six months. How is it that we have sandwiches? How is it that we have anything? How is it that we have pencils, that we have toasters, that we have washing machines, that we have airplanes, that we have iPhones? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is international division of labor. People are working on doing different things for their own purposes in exchange for labor, uh, in exchange for wa wages for their labor that are all a small part of an overall economic product. And then going along with that, there is international trade between human beings that they interact. And in their interaction, there is the assumption of mutual benefit, meaning trade is possible because of a disagreement about value, that both people who trade want what the other person they're trading with has more than what they're willing to trade. And so they both leave the trade feeling that they have been advantaged more than they would have been if they did not trade. And so this happens without our knowledge of the full economic history of every item that there is. It happens in real time. It happens all over the world. And it happens without any one individual, any 
group uh, or board of central planners directing these actions. This is what is called spontaneous order, that people contribute a little bit of a part of the process of a final good or service without even knowing or really without even caring. Let me give another example. Think about a pizza. Okay, if you break down a pizza and you track backward or and you try to imagine backward the economic history that contributes to a pizza, okay, well, you've got pizza, let's take tomato sauce. Okay, you got all the ingredients then in tomato sauce. Well, then you got tomatoes. Well, the tomatoes came from a farm. Now that farmer is growing tomatoes. And as the farmer is growing tomatoes, the farmer does not sit there and think, okay, this tomato is going to be part of a pizza someday. The farmer just simply sells the tomatoes according to what he has and what the demand is for it in order to make money off of the tomatoes. But the farmer, the, the, it even goes back and regresses even further than that. Because if you think about the farmer uses equipment, Maybe the farmer uses tractor, uh, uses different, more industrial items to help him farm. And those items use oil and gasoline. And then the oil and gasoline that's used in the farmer's tractor goes to an oil rig that's drilling oil in the deep floor of the ocean. And the people working on an oil rig are not sitting around thinking the oil that this little bit of oil that I'm going to work to produce is going to be part of a farm that grows tomatoes and that the tomatoes are going to be harvested and sent to a factory where they're going to be mixed with other ingredients to make pizza sauce. And then a restaurant is going to buy that to put it on a pizza and then it's going to be delivered to someone else who eats it. And the person who receives it, they don't know about the oil rig worker. The oil rig worker doesn't know about them. They have no idea about one another in terms of that specific economic interaction, but they both benefited from interacting in this process of international division of labor and trade. And so if you think of these items, it's not miraculous, but it should be pretty amazing that every item that we have has this vast economic history with nobody controlling it and no human being has the knowledge of how it all works. No single human being has the knowledge of how to make a pencil. No single human being has the knowledge of all that it takes to make a pizza. No single human being possesses the knowledge, ability, proximity, and resources by themselves to make a sandwich, to make a toaster. And even attempting to do so, with modern technology and modern resources and time and just doing so as a fun experiment, it would take, in this guy's case for the sandwich, $1,500 and six months. Yet we can just go to the store and get ingredients. We can just go to our we probably have, many of us probably could walk into the kitchen right now and find something to make a sandwich to the point where the sandwich is not something extraordinary to us, but something that's ordinary to us. And this is a unique time because of those realities. This is a unique time in economic history. 